What is up awesome peeps? Brent McCluskey here with Electrified Reviews and today we are reviewing the Surface 604 Rook electric bike. First, let's roll the B-roll. All right, awesome peeps. Again, this is the Surface 604 Rook electric bike. This is a step through frame and it's going to be pretty similar to a lot of the other electric bikes that we've tested from Surface 604. I think this is the third one now that we've tested from this company. Um, they're just really, really good bikes from these, from these guys, Surface 604. Really good value buy, really great bang for your buck. And this one right here, what really separates this from a lot of the other Surface 604 bikes that we have tested so far is this is the first step through frame. So of all the bikes we've tested from this company, this will be the most approachable bike, the easiest one to ride, the lowest standover height, the easiest to get on and off of. And that's kind of the name of the game for most step throughs. That's what they're geared for. Now, this bike right here, it starts for $19.99. So kind of really on the upper threshold of affordable, maybe even kind of out of the affordable price range. But what you get with this bike makes it a incredible value buy. There's a lot of really good components on here. We'll talk about those, but also this company does offer a one year comprehensive warranty, which is just a really good feeling <laughs> when you're buying a bike online to have that warranty. One year covers everything. If something goes wrong, they'll replace the bike, they'll replace the component, they'll ship you out a new one, whatever. They'll make sure they'll do what they have to do to get it fixed for you. So very cool. Now let's go ahead and dive into the specs here on this bike, starting here at the back for the motor. This is going to be a Bafang 500 watt hub motor, 750 watts of peak power, 500 watts of nominal power, 65 newton meters of torque. The Bafang hub motors are pretty powerful. They're some of our favorite hub motors that we've tested. They're not the high end ones like Bosch and Broza, but they do offer a lot of torque and they offer a lot of power and they're pretty quiet and they honestly work really, really well. So this motor right here, that Bafang 500 watt, it brings this bike up to a top speed of 20 miles per hour. You can reach that with the throttle or the pedal assist, which makes this a class two electric bike. Now, speaking of the pedal assist, that's probably gonna be one of, if not the favorite thing um, on this bike right here. So this is gonna have a torque sensor, not a cadence sensor. And what's beautiful about a torque sensor is it, it measures the torque that's being placed on the cranks right here. So the harder I push on these pedals, the more power I'm going to get out of the motor. So it knows how much I need from the bike. Now, compared to a cadence sensor, which measures the rotation of the cranks, that's more of a, start and stop, full power, zero power type of deal. And it just makes it feel like the bike is working for you instead of with you. So really when you have a torque sensor, it just, it feels like it's a buttery smooth ride. And if for any of you guys who have tested it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a huge, huge upgrade point in my opinion, and really not something you see on bikes at the price point of 2000 bucks and below. Typically you only see them on higher end price points. Or if you do see them on a bike at this price point, that's kind of like the only upgrade point that you'll get. Um, but Surface 604 does offer quite a bit more than that, and we'll talk about it. Now, let's go back to the frame here real quick, because I did mention how that the step through is kind of the biggest selling point here, or at least one of them, it's, it's really approachable. The frame itself is gonna be made of 6061 aluminum alloy. Now, the curb weight of this is only gonna be about 55 pounds, which is pretty lightweight, and I think something that's going to be appealing to anybody who wants a step through bike, because um, going back to that kind of approachability, 55 pounds is a little bit lighter than average, especially considering it does have a rear rack, 
and front suspension. So it's kind of a lightweight electric bike and that's just gonna make it easier to handle, easier to maneuver, easier to get it on and off of a bike rack if you're gonna put it in the back of your car or whatever. Just It's just, it's just nice to have a little bit less weight on the bike, right? Here in the back, we've got the Shimano Olivio derailleur nine speed. And this is another one of those things where it's a nice upgrade point. Derailleurs for hub motors, I mean, having an upgrade, it's not that big of a deal. One of the biggest things you're gonna get is, you know, kind of a little bit of weight savings, which is nice. It's going to shift a little bit better than, than an entry level derailleur. Um, but yeah, I mean, nine speeds, Shimano Olivio. Look, I'm not complaining about that. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Up here, this is the trigger shifter. Like I was saying, nine speeds right here and it is an actual trigger shifter not like the shimano sis index thumb shifter which is again another upgrade point so i definitely dig that as well the battery for this bike is going to be a 48 volt 10.4 amp hour that's a stock battery that comes on this bike right here that's going to give it a range of about 35 miles or so the battery that i have installed on this bike is going to be the 14 amp hour version that's the upgrade battery right here and that's gonna raise that max range to about 45 miles or so, which is a pretty reasonable estimate from the company. What's cool about these batteries is they are hot swappable from, well, they're, they're of course, they're locking and removable, so I can just take this off with the turn of a key, but I can use this battery on any bike from Surface 604, which is really, really cool. So if I have two bikes from these guys and I want to have a spare battery maybe to share between us, then you know I can do that and it'll work, it'll work for any of their bikes. Very cool stuff. This battery also does have a USB type A port right there, which means I can charge my accessories on the go. Very cool. It does have a quick little indicator, indicator to check how much juice is left. And then on this side is the key port. And that's how you unlock it and take it off right here. Boom, battery, love it. Oh, that's where it charges right here down at the bottom. Right there. So we have hydraulic disc brakes on this bike, 180 millimeter rotors front and rear, which gives this just tons of stopping power. Tektra hydraulic, hydraulic disc brakes, tons of stopping power. Um, honestly, it's kind of overkill for this bike since the top speed is only 20 miles per hour. But if there's any piece, any component that's gonna be overkill on an electric bike, I would want it to be the brakes because I want that extra stopping power because I'm still going to be going faster on this bike than I would a traditional analog bike. So I really appreciate the upgrade here, the hydraulic disc brakes, really nice, just tons of bite on those, dig it. This does have front suspension as well, Sun Tour XCT suspension here, about 80 millimeters, maybe 100 millimeters of travel, depending on how you measure that here. It does have preload adjust and lockout, so I can adjust these uh, suspension on the fly if I want them to be stiffer or looser, depending on what kind of terrain I'm riding on or just depending on how heavy of a rider I am. So for instance, I weigh 180 pounds, a rider who weighs more or less than me might want to adjust the suspension here to kind of better suit um, their riding style and just their weight. Um, or, you know, if like, again, if you're gonna use this rear rack, which by the way, this rear rack is attached to the frame so there's no installation and it's never going to come undone. It's never, the, the bolts will never rattle free because there are no bolts. It's welded onto the frame. It makes it very durable and <laughs> very long lasting. Also increases the functionality of this bike. So if I add a bunch of weight here to this rear rack, if I'm wearing a backpack as well, loading this thing up, um, that's gonna also increase the load on the bike. Again, just another reason why I would want to be able to adjust the, sus the suspension here. So very cool stuff. Going back to the front of the bike, wire management is pretty good it's not you know fantastic but it's not bad they've done a good job of trying to kind of bunch all these cables together you know these little things right here keeping these cables together um, little little wraps right here that's fine and honestly i know a lot of folks probably kind of prefer this style of cable management i like it when the cables are kind of when they're covered uh, when they've got like a sheath on them and they all feed down in the one nice tightly wrapped bundle that's just my preference but hey man to each their own <laughs> i mean i know i mean what do you guys prefer leave it in the comments i'm really interested to know because i you know for me one of the things like i just i really appreciate good wire management but uh yeah i'd love to hear your thoughts on it this also does have fenders that come with this bike. You can see this one's a little bit, uh, a little bit slanted here. I need to adjust that. Um, but yeah, front and rear fenders, they do come with the bike. That's not an upgrade, it's just come stock. Very nice, helps keep the, uh, the mud off your pants and, the, and off your back. There was a front headlight here and it would attach right here. It comes with the bike. The headlight that I had was actually damaged just because of, uh, it got knocked around in transit and the, 
little plastic attachment piece where it bolts in cracked. Uh, so if this was my bike, I would, you know, I would tell the company and that's kind of one of the warranty things. I would say, hey, this is busted. Can you send me another one? They would ship out a new light and it would be fixed. No problemo. Speaking of lights, it does also have a tail light, which will activate whenever the light system is on. Very good stuff. Trying to think of what else here on the frame. One thing I want to say about step throughs is the more that I have tested step throughs, the more that I've really come to appreciate them. A approachability is just a really good word to use for these bikes. It's just, uh, honestly, they're just really easy to get on and off of. And I don't know, man, like here, let me show you the difference between like how I would get on this bike compared to how I would get on, let's say a traditional bike. That's like a, a, high, a, a step over, okay? So for this bike, because it's a step through, all I have to do is that. And that's kind of the only, that's the height I have to clear is that top tube right there, which is nice and low. And as you can see, like I was talking about that low standover height, it means I can keep my feet flat on the ground when I'm at a stop. And it just, it just gives me a lot more control and a good feeling of safety of the bike. I can also drop the seat post all the way down and then I can keep my feet flat on the ground even with uh, when I'm in the saddle, which is also kind of nice. Now, traditional, you know, step over frame, obviously how you have to get on is you have to swing your whole leg over and then kind of do it like that. And it's just, if you got back problems, if you got knee problems, having a step over, <laughs> you're gonna appreciate it. All right, let's talk about this display here. Long press of the power button to get this thing to come to life. Independent button pad right here, plus, minus, lights, info button, and power. Long press, like I was saying, that turns it on. Screen comes to life. You'll see on the top here, we do have a battery percentage indicator. I mean, come on, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Every display needs one of these. This needs to be the new industry standards. It is, is a, um, a percentage indicator, not a like a four bar, a five bar, whatever, because this kind of gives me a much, much more precise indicator of like how much juice is left in the battery. And that's what I want. I like that. Uh, max speed or current speed right here. This cool little green thing is like a speedometer, like on your car where it starts to tick up as you go faster. Very cool. Um, tripometer, pedal assist level, odometer. If I hit the power button or the info button, sorry, it'll cycle to max speed, uh, average speed, time, and then back to odometer. This does have, I think, five levels of pedal assist. It goes to zero, one, two, three, four, five, and it tops up right there. Throttle is live from zero miles per hour. Beautiful thing. That's something that I always want to see because when you have a throttle that's live from zero miles per hour, it just means I can, I can hit it right away if I'm at a dead stop. And it, with a torque sensor, it's not as important because they're very, it's like I'm saying, it's very responsive. Even if I'm at a stop, if I put pressure on those torques, it's going to start going. But Having a throttle live at zero miles per hour just, just gives me even more control. And speaking of that, I forgot to mention that these brakes, they do have motor inhibitors built into the brake levers here, which means whenever I depress these brake levers, they're going to instantly cut power to the motor. And it's going to ensure I have the shortest possible stopping distance. Excellent safety feature. Again, not really necessary for the torque sensors because the shutoff on the torque sensors is so quick, but a nice upgrade piece. And I do like that. Also, because these are hydraulic brakes, I can adjust the natural resting position of the levers. So I can bring them in if I want and they would sit like that, or I can let them out if I have bigger or smaller hands, wearing gloves in the winter, whatever. But I think that is about it, awesome peeps, for the Surface 604 Rook. I think the next thing to do now is take this bike out for a test ride and show you this in action. So here we go.
All right, awesome peeps. That is pretty much it for the review of the Surface 604 Rook electric bike here. In summary, this thing, again, it starts for $19.99, and this is just going to be a really good choice for people who want a solid commuter of an electric bike, but something that's a little bit more approachable. The step-through frame just makes this so easy to get on and off of, and really, that's kind of one of the biggest selling points of this bike. This is basically, you know, step-through frame. You can get any type of step-through frame that you want from any company, but with the Surface 604 Rook, with this step through frame, there's a lot of high quality components that you get that make this just a really good value buy for what you get. Again, like we talked about, one of my favorite things about this bike is just gonna be the torque sensor. It just makes that ride feel so, so smooth and so responsive. It does have suspension, the upgradable battery to the 14.5 amp hour, 45 miles of range. It has the rear rack built into the frame, so there's no assembly, it never comes off, it never comes undone. It just adds for a lot of utility and functionality for this bike. So it's a solid bike guys i hope you enjoyed this review and i hope you're having a fantastic holiday season christmas is almost here uh hanukkah i think for those of you who celebrate that um, and for any other holidays enjoy those and uh yeah i will catch you guys next time peace